Good evening, everyone. A very good evening to all of you. How are you all doing? All right. Welcome to this Praram session, everybody. So Praram ko Praram kare. So before that, let me introduce myself. As you have already seen my name, my name is Tithi. I am one of the faculty with Biotechnica. And with this Praram series, we are starting our free classes for the Central University Commons and Common Entrance Test for the postgraduates. All right. So today we have uh, our Praram series, we are going to cover the entire syllabus that is given by N um, NAT. Okay, and then in session one, I have taken from uh, the first chapter, that is the first unit of your syllabus, which will be techniques. Okay, so today we are going to talk about some of the very popular techniques, which we often use in molecular biology labs, electrophoresis, blotting and PCR. Okay, now this techniques not only we use in PC uh, is using lab in, in a very regular way, but this techniques are also important from your exam point of view. And if you have pe see people seen the question papers, the previous year's Q set question papers, you will know that there are a lot of questions which have been asked from the techniques. Okay, so what we will do is we, we are going to cover all these topics, okay, and then we are going to dive into some of the previous year questions as well, and we will try to solve them. Okay, and with so that is how we will go. And if you all stay till the end, I will definitely I will request you all to sell, stay till the end. At the end, you will get if you fill up the uh, the feedback form, you will get a free gift. That free gift will be the notes for this techniques. All right. So that will be completely free. That will be given to you all. Just that you have to stay till the end of the session and you have to fill up the feedback form. Okay. Let's get started, everyone. Come on, write some BIOs. Bring it on. Okay. All right, Pratik, Nutan, Nishant, Swagatika, great. All right, let's start. So very first technique that we are going to talk about is electrophoresis. Now, electrophoresis can be of two types, agarose gel electrophoresis and polyacrylamide gel electrophoresis. We will talk about each of them one by one, starting with agarose gel electrophoresis. So researchers use this agarose gel electrophoresis technique to separate biological molecules based on their size. Okay. Now it is most commonly used in the separation of DNA molecules. So it is frequently used during DNA manipulation techniques or studies involving individ identifying individuals based on their unique DNA sequences. Now, agarose gel electrophoresis is the most effective way of separating DNA fragments of varying sizes, ranges ranging from 100 base pair to 25 kilo base pair. The use of agarose gel electrophoresis revolutionized the separation of DNA. Now, this agarose that we are talking about, this agarose is actually a polymer which is uh, uh, which is obtained from a seaweed. Now. In agarose gel electrophoresis, what we do is we can we we dissolve this agarose in water and we we make a gel out of it. Okay, so during the gelation, the agarose polymers associate non-covalently and form a network of bundles whose pore size determine a gel's molecular sieving property. Now, when our bio biomolecules are passed through that gel with that sieving property with the pores in it they will face different kind of resistance okay and according to that they will get separated okay so let's see the principle here so dna contain a negative charge right we all know that dna is negative in charge okay because of the phosphate group that is present in the backbone of dna 
So DNA has a negative charge for every nucleobase present, making the mass to charge ratio of DNA the same across the different fragments. Now, since the charge to mass ratio of the DNA becomes same, all right, then the DNA sample should all move towards the positive electrode when you put it in a in, in, in an electrophoresis system, okay, because DNA is negatively charged, okay. So, where it will go? It will start going where the charge is positive, okay. So, who will it be? An electrode, right. So, when electricity is passed, then the DNA, which is negative in charge, starts moving towards the positive electrode, okay. Now, since all the DNA molecules of different size you take, but they all are negatively charged, right? So they will have the same mobility in the gel under the applied electrical field, okay? Tatparya, uh, the notes will be given at the end. At the end of the session, a link, a feedback link will be given to you. If you form, if you fill up the feedback form, the notes will be, uh, you will be able to get the notes. Right. Now, separation in agarose gel is achieved because of resistance to their movement caused by the gel matrix, right? So, gel matrix will have different pores. So, they will try to resist the movement of the DNA or the, or the biomolecule through the gel. Now, mobility of DNA molecule during gel electrophoresis will depend on the size, okay? Size of what? Size of the DNA fragment, okay? The smallest molecule will move the fastest. Okay, whereas the largest molecule that will move the least. So gel concentration must be chosen to suit the size range because whatever we gel concentration we take, that will determine the pore size of the gel. Okay, and depending on the pore size of the gel, that is going to affect the mobility of the biomolecule through the gel. Okay, now this is the, um, uh, this is how a, uh, uh, agarose gel electrophoresis apparatus looks like. Now, how many of you have actually seen or actually done agarose gel electrophoresis in your graduation? Anybody? At least I think if you people are from applied sciences, you must have done it. It is regularly included in your practical labs. Okay, Krupa. Okay, Tatparya. Okay, you uh, separately you have done it. Okay, Nishant, you have seen it. All right. Okay. So you all, so most of you, yes, so many people have said that said that they have done it or they have seen it. So you all know this system, right? This apparatus you have seen, right? Yes, good, good. Okay, so you can relate to it very well here. So this is how the tank looks like. Okay, so here this is the buffer tank. On the buffer tank, the electrodes are put, okay? So, the black one will be the negative in charge. The red one will be positive. Then on that, this is the gel casting, okay? So, this is the casting dam. So, on this uh, cast only, we put the, we join the dams on the side and then we cast our gel. Once the gel has solidified, then we remove this cast, okay? So, that the electricity can pass through the gel. Okay, when this cast will be put here inside and it will be covered with the buffer, the electrodes will be put, the batteries will be set and the tank will be covered and that's how we start the electrophoresis. Okay, now before going forward, yes, we have like you want to get more classes, podcasts, webinars, etc. Uh, please uh, download our app, Biotechnica app. It is available in Google Play as well as apps, uh, the Apple App Store. And also, you can join Biotechnica Telegram group. The link is given here. So, all the latest updates in the biotechnology field, in, in the biology field, you will get through Biotechnica. The pore size Krupa will depend on the concentration of the agros that you add in making the gel. Okay, that will decide the pore size of the, uh, the, the gel or that will in turn also decide the strength of the gel. Okay, ha like whether the gel is holding up or not, whether it is too tight or too soft like that. Have you people made gel jelly in the in, in house? There are jelly powders which are available in the shop. Have you ever tried making a jelly?
No? Okay, Thatparya, you have. Okay, so if you have not done it and if you have not got a chance to do this agrose gel electrophoresis also, okay, so what you can do is try buy those jelly packets and try to make the jelly at home. Okay, so you will see that when you add it in the correct amount, how the box is given. So the jelly will all will be able to hold its shape at the same time. It will be very soft also. Okay, but if you add too much of gel, jelly, uh, gelatin powder or too less of gelatin powder, then the jelly will become either too hard or too soft. Okay, so th that is how the same concept will be here in the gel, in, in making the gel here. So gel is a gel only, right? So here we are not definitely making an edible jelly. We are making it with agarose so that we can pass the DNA through it. Yeah, you can add agar agar also. Yes, so agar agar is actually added when we make the our microbiology um, uh, plates, right? The, uh, the microbiology petri plates, when you make with the medium, we add agar agar. Okay, now let's move on to the protocol. Um, uh, Pratyusha, yes, this class will be available in our Biotechnica uh, uh, channel in YouTube. Okay, so the protocol of agarose gel electrophoresis can be divided into three steps. First is the preparation of the gel. Okay, so the gel concentration matters here a lot. Okay, so what, how much concentration of agarose you will put? Okay, so usually the in 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 the in the in the, uh, in, the, in the labs that if you have seen usually. 0.8% of uh, concentration is used. 0.8% of agarose concentration is used, which is the most common. And that is very good in separating DNA of 0.5 to 10 KB in size. Okay. So if we have to, uh, uh, have to separate uh, DNA of bigger size than this, then what we have to do? We have to make the pore size also bigger. Right. So for that, we have to add lesser concentration of agarose. OK. But at the same time, if we are looking for separating smaller fragments of DNA, OK, then what we have to do, we have to make the pore size also small so that there can be a difference. There can be a gradient when the DNA fragments get separated in the gel. OK. So in that condition, we will have to add more higher concentration of agarose. OK. Now, what we do first in the gel, in the gel, so we will be dissolving the agarose powder. Okay, heat it, and we will make it transparent, and then we will pour it in our gel cast. Okay, so there the mold will be there on the side. Either you can join your dams that we saw here, right? This uh, red colored dams. Okay, you can join them, or we can also do it uh, by put by by joining some cello tape on the side. Okay, and then you pour the gel. Now, at this, when you pour the gel, when the gel is liquidy, okay, so at the same time, we will also put some comb here, okay. The comb will look like just a comb with many teeth, okay. Now, this comb, it helps in forming the wells because on in this wells, we will be loading our sample, okay. So, we will put the comb here, then we will let the gel solidify. Okay, once the gel solidifies, it takes around 20 to 30 minutes to solidify. So after that, we will remove the site. So if you have put cello tape, you remove it. If you have put the dams, you remove it. Okay, and be very careful and carefully take out the combs as well. All right, is it followed everybody? So that is how we ready our gel. Are you all following? Please have some responses. All right. Okay. Now, once the gel is ready, then we will put this apparatus in our buffer tank. 
okay and in the buffer tank we will be setting up the gel apparatus and separation of the dna fragment okay so for that first of all we will okay now when we are making the gel okay i forgot to tell you one very important component we will add in it is etbr okay which stands for ethidium bromide okay now this ethidium bromide is a carcinogenic component so definitely proper care has to be taken but this ethidium bromide is needed because after the gel after the dna so agrosyl electrophoresis is majorly used for separation of dna fragments so how to visualize the dna okay so that we can do with the help of etbr so etbr is an intercalating agent so when there is dna in the gel so etbr will go and intercalate with the dna fragment so that when we watch it under uv light at the end those strands the dna fragments the bands that will be created by the dna fragment that can be seen clearly okay so that's why etbr is added okay so it helps in staining the dna okay now in the next step we have to set up the apparatus okay so we will put this gel inside our buffer tank okay then we will put our buffer also okay and we will cover the gel with the buffer now once the buffer has been put next step will be loading of the sample uh no uh, ak the etbr is added at in the gel itself okay now in the sample loading buffer okay so in the sam at the time of sample loading what do we add we are going to add the our dna sample okay plus the loading uh, dye okay now what does this loading dye will contain the loading dye will contain bromophenol blue and glycerol okay so dna plus bromophenol blue okay plus glycerol so this is part of the loading dye okay now why are this two added so bromophenol blue again the when the dna so you have if you load your dna directly okay so you will not dna is not visible here okay you cannot see it with the naked eye so you will not know how far your sample has traveled right so to give you a visual this bromophenol blue is added which uh, this bromophenol blue which acts as a color indicator to monitor the migration of dna in the uh, gel electrophoresis okay yes tatparya so glycerol okay now why do we add glycerol okay so see glycerol will do what so when are we adding our sample we are adding our sample after we have put the buffer right so if we, so if we want our sample to go in the well and stay in the well then only it can pass through the gel right so for that we add glycerol which has higher density so it weighs down the sample so it can sink in the uh, in the in the well of the gel okay so that it does not come out of the well our sample dna stays in the well and when we pass our electricity it moves through the gel it does not come out and diffuse in the buffer okay that's why glycerol is added okay now with the help of a micro pipette we will very carefully mix our dna sample and the loading dye and then we will load them in the well is it followed everybody okay now after that what we will do we will set up the apparatus okay so we will close the lid we will join the electrodes and start the electrophoresis okay as the electrophoresis will be started okay now one more thing you have to make sure that the wells should be near the negative electrode okay because we want the dna to go to the positive side if you do the other way then simply from the from the well the dna will come out right so when you put your uh, gel here in electrophoresis we have to make sure uh, no vidya the bromophenol blue will help in visualizing the electrophoretic front okay the sample like how far the sample has traveled so it will give you an idea 
okay but your dna will be behind that bromophenol blue only bromophenol blue will just give you a front which will give you an idea that this sample has traveled till this end okay but the dna fragment will travel in the gel depending on their um, uh, size right so they will travel at a lesser speed only than bromophenol blue so they will be behind it only but we cannot see where exactly it is. For that, we have added ETBR. So once we remove the gel and watch it under my uh, UV light, then we will be able to see those bands. Do you follow, Vidya? Okay. So as I was saying that the gel has to be put near the, the well should be near the negative electrode. Okay, so that the DNA has got a chance to move towards the positive electrode. Okay, then after that, once the separation is done. Okay, so once we have seen that bromophenol blue has traveled this end. Okay, that means it is about at the end of here. Right. So we will stop the gel electroporosis. Okay, we will stop the current. All right. We will take out the gel very carefully. Okay. And then we will observe the separated DNA bands. Now we can observe it. The uh, earlier way was observing it under uh, UV light. Okay, so wherever the bands are there, the ETBR will give the uh, give the glow like this. Okay, but nowadays gel documentation systems are available, and this gel documentation system you simply put on your gel. Okay, all right. See, okay, Nikita, I will clear you. So if this is our gel, okay, so here is our sample well, okay. Now you have started electrophoresis, the sample is moving, okay, but in your naked eye, you can't see anything. If you have not added bromophenol blue, you will not be able to see anything. It will be just like this. Do you get me? If you simply add your sample with glycerol, DNA sample with glycerol, so your gel will just appear like this. Even after uh, one hour, two hour, three hours also. Because we can't see the sample, we don't know where it has traveled. Okay. So what do we do? We add a dye. What is that dye? That dye is the bromophenol blue. Okay. Now this bromophenol blue is a small dye. Okay. So this bromophenol blue will have the maximum, um, the maximum, it will travel the maximum distance. Okay, so if this bromophenol blue is here, so you can see it with during the electrophoresis only, you can see that your bromophenol blue is here. Okay, now bromophenol blue is a very small molecule. So if you are able to see it here, that means your DNA sample, which is definitely bigger than bromophenol blue, will be somewhere behind only. Do you get me, Nikita? But where your DNA sample is, that you cannot see. But you just know that it is behind the bromophenol blue. Okay. So once you know that your bromophenol blue is here. So after that, if you keep on uh, adding, uh, keep on electrophoresing, then this bromophenol blue will move out of the gel. And just behind it, your sample can also go out of the gel. Right. So we don't want that. Okay. So that's why we will. So once bromophenol blue it reaches here okay the electro so we know that this is the electrophoresis front okay this is the front most molecule in electrophoresis so this is where we are going to stop the electrophoresis followed so you know that your dna sample is somewhere here Okay, in this area. Where exactly? We don't know. All right. Now, to visualize that, now we have to put UV light. And in UV light, in UV light, this ethidium bromide will glow. Okay. And where it will glow? Only when ethidium bromide, which has got intercalated with the DNA. Okay. So, if these are the places where your DNA fragments are present from the sample of different wells, so this regions will glow. Okay, you see here, this regions. Okay, so that, that will show the position of the DNA in each lane. 
okay and how you are getting it because of etbr which has got intercalated with the dna okay so bromophenol blue basically gives you an idea about So uh, the bromophenol uh, blue will give you the idea about that the, the electrophoresis is when to stop the electrophoresis and ethidium bromide will help you in locating the exact position in the gel of the fragment of the DNA fragment. Okay. So what will be the situation that the fragment which are most uh, the, the, the the smallest fragments they will travel the most distance the largest fragments will travel the least distance okay so if this is a fragment here since it has traveled the most distance it will be the smallest fragment okay but if this is the fragment then it will be the largest fragment because it has traveled the least distance Yes, absolutely correct, Nikita. So what are the applications of um, uh, agarose gel electrophoresis? So it is it is done in, uh, it is used in molecular cloning to find the different or to separate DNA of different fragment sizes. It is used in genetic fingerprinting and it is also used in diagnostics. Now, electrophoresis can also be done for RNA as well. Any membranes or papers that are used during DNA separation? No. But when we talk about, uh, when we talk about uh, the blotting process, okay, which can be the next step after electrophoresis, then the paper or membrane comes in the picture. Stay connected. We will talk about that. So electrophoresis of RNA, so just like DNA, RNA electrophoresis can also be carried out by agarose gel electrophoresis. Okay, the principal protocol, everything remains same. Just one difference is there that because RNA is single stranded, so RNA has a tendency of forming secondary structures of it. Okay, now if the secondary structures are formed, then it will be difficult to separate the RNA based on their fragment size alone. Okay, so that's why we have to run a, a type of gel called as denaturing gel. Okay, so we have to run RNA in a denaturing gel. So this denaturing gel is made by adding formaldehyde, glyoxal, or methyl mercuric hydroxide, which are all denaturing agents. Okay, so this denaturing agents will clear any secondary structure if it is formed by the RNA. Okay, so that the RNA can be separated solely on the basis of its size in the agarose gel electrophoresis. Okay, and also denatured RNA stains very weakly with ethidium bromide. So another staining agent that is acridin orange is commonly used for visualizing the RNA. Okay. Now moving on to the next type of electrophoresis that is polyacrylamide gel electrophoresis that is PAGE. This PAGE is also often referred to as SDS PAGE because uh, this polyacrylamide gel electrophoresis, we often use it for separation of protein. And when we are using it for separation of protein, we always combine SDS with it. SDS stands for sodium dodecyl sulfate, which is a detergent. Okay. So SDS page is the most common, most widely used method for analyzing the protein mixture quantitatively. And this method is based on the separation of protein according to size. Okay. But if you see page, this can also be used for separating nucleic acids like DNA. Okay. In that scenario, you don't have to uh, uh, mix it with SDS. Okay. But it, only it will be polyacrylamide gel electrophoresis. In fact, if you have to separate DNA fragments where the size difference is very less, okay, the difference is just one or two nucleotide, then page gives a very good result.
yeah nivedita you can use etbr for iso for visualizing the rna but you because rna is single stranded so it does not stain very nicely or very strongly with ethidium bromide okay but it's strong it stains better with another dye that is acridine orange okay so that's why for visualizing rna that has been separated by agarose gel electrophoresis acridine orange is used Now, moving on to the SDS page uh, principle. So here what happens is SDS is a detergent. To be specific, it's an anionic detergent. Okay, so it will add negative charge. Okay. With a strong protein denaturing age effect and binds to the protein backbone at a constant molar ratio. Okay. So when we are talking about a uh, pro, uh, so this SDS uh, SDS when we are talking, which is an anionic detergent, okay. So it will bind with the protein backbone with a constant molar ratio. Now when we treat our sample, which is sample of protein, with SDS and a reducing agent, which is used here, beta mercaptoethanol. which is the reducing agent, okay? So what does beta mercaptoethanol do? It will, uh, it, it will um, cleave any disulfide bond, okay? So it will cleave any disulfide bond uh, that is critical for the proper folding of the protein. So basically, it will make the protein a single-stranded structure of amino acids. You can see here, okay? So this is a folded protein, which has uh, the disulfide bonds that helps it in folding okay so when this sample is treated with sds and a reducing agent like beta mercapto ethanol so it will break the disulfide bridges and then it will result into a single chain okay on that single chain this sds which is an anionic detergent will come and bind okay so if we see uh, overall so one sds one sds binds to two amino acid residues okay the original charge on the molecule so what will happen because of that whatever is the original charge of the protein that will get uh, that will get cancelled and overall the protein will have a negative charge the num amount of negative charge that the protein has will depend on the length of the amino acid in the chain okay so proteins unfold into linear chain with negative charge proportional to the polypeptide length uh, chain length. This eliminates the influence of the structure and ch uh, charge and the proteins are separated solely based on polypeptide chain length. When proteins are separated by electrophoresis through gel matrix, smaller proteins, the same principle here also. Smaller proteins migrate faster due to less resistance. The larger protein will migrate to lesser distance because of more resistance. Okay, so that is how the proteins will be separated solely as a result of uh, a difference in their uh, in 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 the length of the amino acid chain. Do you all get the idea? Now, let's talk about the protocol. So, assemble the gel casting mold. Okay. So, this is how the gel casting mold will look. Okay. So, it will be two plates and uh, in the, in the within the two plates, we will cast the gel. Okay. So, if you people, if anybody has performed the electro, uh, this um, SDS page, you will know. So, we will take two glass plates. Basically, we will put the molds on the side. Okay. The dams or the bars on the side. Mm -hmm. And then within it, we will cast our gel. Okay, now in SDS page, we have two types of gel. Okay, one is called as separating gel, one is called as stacking gel. Okay, so it is separating gel or resolving gel, which is down, okay, and stacking gel that is on the top. All right. Now, when we are start, when we start uh, making our gel, so we will start pouring from the top only right so first we will pour the solution of the separating gel now this separating gel is around uh, 
five it's it has a concentration of six to fifteen percent polyacrylamide and it will be around five centimeter long and the main difference here is the ph okay so ph and the concentration so concentration will be five to fifteen percent of polyacrylamide and ph is eight point eight okay of the resolving gel or the separating gel however the stacking gel will be having a bigger pore size okay so the concentration of it will be less so concentration here is around four percent of gel the stacking gel has a concentration of four percent and the ph here will be less okay ph is 6.8 So first we will uh, pour the acrylamide solution for the separating gel and then we have to overlay it with water okay because uh, we have to prevent the acrylamide to come in contact with air if we have to allow it to polymerize okay so if when we overlay it with water so acrylamide will not come in contact with water and it will uh, sorry not come in contact with air and it will polymerize so 20 to 30 minutes it will take to polymerize the gel once we see that the gel is polymerized we will uh, we will remove the water from the top okay then we will pour the stacking gel okay now and then in the stacking gel will be our well okay so I, then we will pour the uh, we will make the comb okay and then we will allow the solution to polymerize Next, we will be pouring the, so once the gel has set, okay, both our resol uh, resolving gel or the separating gel and stacking gel both have uh, set, then we will remove the sides, okay, we will remove the clips, spacer, comb from the gel assembly and mount the gel in the electrophoresis apparatus, okay, and it will be put like this only, okay, within the glass plates, so we'll not, we are not going to remove the glass plates here, okay, then the sample is, uh, then we will put the running buffer in the apparatus okay we will put the entire apparatus inside the uh, sds page uh, uh, system and then we will start the electrophoresis okay the, the samples to be run on sds page are first now how to prepare the sample so the sample that we have to run that is the protein uh, solution that we have so first we will boil it for five minutes in the sample buffer containing beta mercaptoethanol and SDS page. So beta mercaptoethanol will cleave any disulfide bridges that is there. So it will linearize the, uh, the chain and then we will treat, then the SDS that is there, it will bind, okay, giving a uniform negative charge. Then the sample is mixed with the sample buffer and again loaded onto the wells of the gel. Okay, now here also we will be mixing it with a loading buff, uh, uh, the, the loading dye. Okay, and this loading dye here will ha also have bromophenol blue, which will again give us an idea about the electrophoretic front and it will have sucrose or glycerol for the density. Now, once the samples are loaded, the current is passed through the gel. So, we will start our electrophoresis. In the so first of all, what will happen? The sample will leave the well and come in the stacking gel. Okay. Now, why is it called as stacking gel? Okay. So in stacking gel, what will happen is the stacking gel has large pore size, right? So th there won't be any resistance that the protein will feel. So this will allow the protein to move freely and concentrate under the effect of the electric field the band sharpening effect will be there okay and how this band sharpening will happen so it because it relies on the fact that negatively charged glycemate ion which is there in the electrophoretic buffer have lower mobility than the protein sds complex which has lower mobility than the chloride ions of the loading buffer okay so what will be the scenario in the stacking gel okay so in the stacking gel okay so there are three components there is glycemate ions there is sds protein complex and then there is the chloride ions 
okay the glycemate ions has the least mobility in the stacking gel then little bit higher mobility is of the sds protein complex and the most mobility is of the chloride ion because it is the smallest in size okay so when the sample comes in the stacking gel okay and under the electric field the, our sds protein complex gets sandwiched between the glycemate and the chloride ion as you can see here okay so that helps in creating us a, a, a band sharpening okay it it helps in uh, stacking or it helps in collecting all the proteins in the sample in a lane at one place do you people follow so pranita the buffer will uh, will act, first of all the buffer will allow the electrophoresis to happen okay it will let the uh, the electrons flow and the buffer will also uh, supply the glycemate ion okay so once now in the stacking gel so sds and protein complex will get sandwiched between the glycine and the chloride ions okay now as it enters the separating gel so as this sandwich enters the separating gel the situation changes what will happen the separating gel will have higher ph okay now because of the higher ph the glycinate is uh, in the separating gel gets fully ionized okay and that increases its mobility okay now chloride ion was all, already in the front okay now glycinate will also come in the front and overtake the sds protein okay complex now then in the resolving gel or in the separating gel the sds protein complex will be left alone to move on its own and to get separated according to the fragment size okay so in the separating gel the sds protein complex separate owing to the molecular sieving property of the gel now once we see by the bromophenol blue we will get the idea about how far the our sample has traveled so then once we see that it is about to get over so we will stop the electrophoresis very carefully we have to take out the gel the gel is stuck between two glass plates okay so very carefully we have to take out the gel remove the gel assembly from the electrophoresis apparatus remove the gel from the glass plate using a spatula and then it is shaken into a staining solution okay that staining solution here will help us in staining the separated protein bands okay usually comacy brilliant blue is used okay so usually it will be shaken for in the in the in a tub it will be taken along with comacy brilliant blue solution and it will be the gel will be shaken in it for around an hour okay now our entire gel will get some amount of stain okay then we have to take out the gel and de-stain it so that anywhere else other than the positions of the protein where the comacy brilliant blue is giving a color that portion has to be washed okay so a de-staining solution the gel will be then put in a de-staining solution which will remove the unbound background dye on the gel leaving the stained protein visible as blue band or clear on clear background okay so separating gel uh, uh, vesali i told you that it will have a different concentration which is around 5 to 15 percent of polyacrylamide with a ph of 8.8 okay so if you see the apparatus so you prepare the sample by heating it with sds and beta mercaptoethanol then there is the gel preparation then we will load the sample in our wells start the electrophoresis run the gel then stain the gel in comacy brilliant blue de-stain it so that we get a clear background and then wherever proteins are present then we will get the bands here okay so the bands which is farthest that means these are the smallest in size and the bands that are closest to the well means these are the largest in size okay now next we are moving on to blotting 
so guys we have um, uh, we have um, 45 minutes of our session are already over and we are still at blotting we have to cover pcr also so let's start so blotting is now what is blotting okay so whatever we have separated in our electrophoresis whether it is a dna or it is a protein okay so gel is kind of fragile right we cannot store the gel for long okay and also gel by gel electrophoresis we are able to separate the proteins or the dna according to their fragment length okay but whether to uh, how to identify whether a particular dna or a particular uh, rna uh, from the uh, from uh, from that uh, from a gene or whether a particular protein is present in the sample or not okay so for that purpose we have to go for blotting Okay. So, blotting is used in molecular biology for the identification of protein and nucleic acids and is widely used for diagnostic purposes. The blotting technique is basically a tool which is used in the identification of biomolecules such as DNA, mRNA and protein during different stages of gene expression. Now, this technique immobilizes the molecule of interest on a support which is a nitrocellulose membrane or a nylon membrane. It uses hybridization technique for the identification of the specific nucleic acids and probe. So the identification for that, we will be simply using the probes. Okay. So probes, which are short oligonucleotides, which will be labeled with a certain um, uh, label. Okay. It can be labeled with a uh, radioactive element or it can be labeled with a uh, non-radioactive element. Okay. Which will result, which will help us in tracking its actual position. So this is how the blotting assembly looks like. Okay. So what basically is done? So whether you have polyacrylamide gel or agarose gel, so that will be kept on a sponge, which is dipped in a electrophoresis buffer. Okay, so by the process of diffusion and by the process of capillary action, the, the, the electrophoresis buffer will move to the top. Okay, because on the top, we will be keeping a stack of uh, tissue papers with some weight. Okay, so the, by the capillary action, yes, that's right, Vishal, I'll come to it. I'll just give you, I'm first giving you a brief idea about the general blotting technique. Okay, so then, uh, so by the capillary action, the, the buffer will start traveling from bottom to top, okay, against the gravity. So as it keeps on going, so what it will do, it will carry the DNA or protein which has been separated in the gel and take it to the nitrocellulose paper. Okay, so our buffer will keep on going to the stack of paper only. Okay, but because of the because of the charge that is present in our protein and the DNA, so that will stop here. Okay, they will bind covalently with the nitrocellulose paper or the nylon membrane. Okay, so DNA or uh, protein will be transferred from the gel to the membrane okay and it will stop there and it will be present exactly in the same pattern how it is present in the gel. Okay, so that is what exact uh, overall is blotting. Now, there are different blotting techniques. So, blotting that is used to detect DNA is called as southern blot. The blotting that is used to detect RNA is called as northern blot. And the blotting technique that is used to detect protein is called as western blot. Okay, now even though the names here look are looking like the names of the directions, but it has nothing to do with the direction. In the blotting technique, southern blotting technique was developed first. Okay, it was developed by a scientist, Edward Southern. Okay, now because of that, it got the name southern blot. Okay, which was specifically for detecting DNA. So the, bro the probes were specific for detecting the DNA. Okay, now a similar technique was then developed by other scientists, which was to detect the RNA. Okay, now because of the similarity with the technique of southern blot, they gave it the then northern blot. Okay, it has nothing to do with the direction. And western blot was again uh, developed for detecting the protein. Okay, and again by this because of the similarity of the method, but the prince the, the 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 molecule that you are detecting is different, but the method is by the similar method. Okay, so that is called as western blot.
So if you see the general uh, procedure of blotting, so first of all, we homogenize the sample. Then we separate the molecule of interest. Okay, so whether it is nucleic acid or protein or RNA. So if whether it is DNA or RNA or protein. Okay, we will separate it by electrophoresis gel. Okay, then we will transfer those separated fragments in the electrophoresis gel in the same pattern in a nitrocellulose membrane or a nylon membrane. Okay, and then once it has transferred, then we will try to detect the DNA, RNA or protein that has stuck on the nylon membrane with the help of labeled probes. So if we are detecting DNA, then it will be called as southern blot. If we are detecting RNA, then it will be called as northern blot. And if we are detecting protein, then it will be called as western blot. So let's talk about this southern blot. So it was developed by Edward Southern in 1970s. To oversimplify, the DNA molecules are transferred from agarose gel into a membrane. Okay. Then a label single-stranded DNA probes are used to locate a particular sequence of DNA within a mixture complex. Okay. So let's have a look here. So we will explain it with the diagram and it will be easier. So once the gel has been done, okay, electrophoresis is done. So we will take out the gel. Then we will put it on the sponge here, okay, and the buffer will be there. Okay, so as the buffer moves ahead upward by the capillary action, so it will take the DNA that has been separated in the agarose gel to the nitrocellulose membrane, which is present just over the gel. Okay, in the same way. All right. Then, uh, so, and the DNA or will be the stuck here, okay, on the nitrocellulose membrane. All right. So, first we will create this assembly. Okay, so once it has transferred, fine. So, the gel, whatever pattern was there on the gel, in the same pattern, the segments will be present on the nitrocellulose filled, uh, paper. Okay, as you can see here, the yellow one. Okay, now once it has been done, then what we do, we hybridize it with unique nucleic acid probes. Okay, to detect the specific DNA, those probes will be properly labeled. Then we, we give it a multiple washes also so that if there is any unattached probes, nylon membrane or nitrocellulose membrane it can also be used, Rajesh. Okay, so we give it a proper um, uh, shake here and we give it a proper wash so that any unattached probes can be removed. And then finally, we see where all our probes have attached. Okay, now the probe is single stranded, so it can only bind with single stranded DNA, right? Now, if you remember in agarose gel, we have not done anything like that, right? We have let the DNA to be double stranded only. So if we are going for southern plot, so one step we have to include is that we have to soak the gel in an alkali okay which will make our dna single stranded so that when we keep attach the probe so probe will have a sequence which is complementary to uh, the dna which we want to find or gene of interest so the probe will go and bind to that segment of the dna where it finds the complementarity okay and the probes, if the probes are radioactively labeled, so we can watch, see them, the bands can be seen easily in the autoradiogram. So applications of southern blotting. Uh, southern blotting technique is used to detect DNA in a given sample. DNA in DNA fingerprinting, it is used for paternity testing, criminal identification, victim identification, to iso isolate and identify desired gene of interest can also be used in restriction fragment length polymorphism okay can be used in diagnosis of disease and, and it can also be used in uh, uh, identify the infectious agents now northern blot is very much similar to uh, southern blot it was developed by james alvin david kemp and george stank at stanford university just that we here instead of detecting a dna we are going to detect rna 
okay so same thing we will do the electrophoresis separate the rna in the gel then we will assemble or we will uh, yeah we will put the blotting assembly together transfer the tra uh, the separated rna from the gel to the nitrocellulose membrane okay then we will treat it with our probe okay radio labeled probe give it a proper wash and then we will see by autoradiography where all probes have attached so that will help us in identifying the rna because it is northern blood so there are a few things to remember that the rna samples are separate using agarose gel so we have already seen that when we are talking about separation of rna by agarose gel we have to use formaldehyde so that any secondary structure that might be present in the rna can be resolved okay then ethidium bromide or in case of rna it can also be acridine orange that can be used probes can be complementary the whole complementary to the whole or a part of rna of interest and probe can be dna rna or oligonucleotide of uh, 25 complementary base pairs of the target RNA. Application, it helps in analysis, analyzing the and revealing the size and sizes of mRNA encoded by a gene. Northern blot analysis can also be used to investigate whether an mRNA is present in a cell type or tissue and how much of it is present. All right. So everybody, did you follow so far? We have talked about electrophoresis. We have talked about blotting. Now we are moving on to the third technique that is polymerize, uh, polymerase chain reaction, which in short is called as PCR. Are you people following? Everybody, are you following? Okay, great. All right. Now, moving on to polymerase chain reaction. Polymerase chain reaction or PCR is a technique of amplification of DNA. Okay, so it is used for amplification of uh, DNA. So uh, Saloni Western blot is same like this blotting techniques. Okay, so there, first of all, we will separate the protein by SDS page. Okay, then transfer it in the uh, in the in the membrane and then detect it with the help of probes. Okay, so it is an amplification technique. Okay, now this technique is selective amplification of a chosen uh, region of DNA molecule. Okay, so what happens is when you have a DNA which is double stranded. Okay, so there, first of all, so this is like a DNA amplification, so which is kind of like DNA replication process only. But in DNA replication, we are rep uh, replicating the entire DNA molecule. Here, it will be a selective region only will be replicated again and again and again and again. So that that segment, okay, amplifies. All right. So that is what is PCR. Now, this PCR technique is... Uh, very sensitive technique that it is so sensitive and uh, that you can even start with a single DNA molecule and at the end of this chain reactions of around 30 cycles you will get around 2 to the power 30 uh, um, uh, DNA molecules okay at the end of this 30 cycles now what all things we need so the main requirement for PCR is the PCR primers and tag polymerase Okay, now why do we need it? I'll get back to it. Let's see what is what are the steps of PCR. So if we see the outline, so PCR consisted of three steps that appear one after another. First step is denaturation. In denaturation, what we do, we, we are going to denature the DNA. Denature the DNA means we are going to separate the strands. Now, the strands are held together by hydrogen bonds. So if we have to separate the strands, we have to cleave these hydrogen bonds 
right how we can cleave it by giving it a high temperature okay so the reaction is started by heating the temperature at 94 degree celsius as 94 degrees celsius the hydrogen bonds will break and the two strands will separate okay so that will be denaturation now next step is annealing annealing of what annealing of primer okay now why primer pcr is what i told you it's basically a dna replication process only okay so for dna replication what happens that we need a polymerase right the enzyme is dna polymerase now dna polymerase cannot start adding nucleotide on its own it needs a primer it needs a free three prime end and then only it can add nucleotide complementary to the template strand so who will provide this free three prime oh end that free three prime oh end is provided by the primer okay so we need a primer now this primer will come and attach wherever it will find the complementary region okay now i told you that pcr is a selective amplification process okay so which side or which segment of dna is getting amplified will depend on where the primer is binding right so this selection will be uh, totally driven by the primer okay so in pcr we will choose the primer which will have a sequence that is complementary to the sequence uh, of the region that is present flanking the segment of the dna that we want to amplify so if we want to amplify this segment okay so we will choose a primer which will be complementary to the region flanking the segment of dna the target region of dna okay so in the annealing now we want the primer to attach now if if we keep the temperature this high primer cannot be able to attach so we have to lower the temperature okay so temperature is then reduced to 50 to 60 degrees so that the primer can attach with its complementary sequence okay now as we lower the temperature there's very well very good chance that two dna fragments can also join again okay by complementarity so that is avoided by adding more concentration of primer or adding higher uh, adding primers in higher concentration okay so now the D now once the primers have attached now the dna synthesis can start now who will do the dna synthesis so for dna synthesis we need a dna polymerase the dna polymerase that is used for PCR, the classical PCR is TAC polymerase. Okay. TAC polymerase because it is isolated from the bacterium Thermus aquaticus, which is found in the. No, Nikita, for separation, we use SDS page. For detection, we use Western blotting. SDS page is for separation. For detection, it is Western blotting. Similarly, for DNA and RNA also, agarose gel electrophoresis or polyacrylamide gel electrophoresis is for separation. For detection, it is either Southern blot or Northern blot, respectively. Okay. So, we need TAC polymerase. So, okay so in the extension step we are again going to raise the temperature to 74 degrees celsius because it is the temperature where the tac polymerase shows the maximum activity okay so the target dna sequence will be synthesized all right so once the primer has attached here then the, the primers will provide the free three prime oh group and from that three prime oh group the rdn the tac polymerase will synthesize now why do we need tac polymerase because we need a polymerase that is able to withstand this higher temperature so if we add dna polymerase from any other organism it will not be able to withstand it is not thermostable but tac polymerase is thermostable okay so that's why for pcr tac polymerase is used okay now that will be just one cycle okay now like that so once this extension happened so again the denaturation step will start okay again we will heat the sample again we will lower it to the annealing step in the temperature and then again it will be the extension okay so like that by repeating this cycle around 30 times the double stranded molecule that we began 
width is converted into over 130 million new double stranded molecules each one a copy of the region of starting molecule delineated by the annealing sites of the two primers okay so how many copies we will get at the end of the cycle that we can calculate by this formula 2 to the power n multiplied by x okay where n is the number of cycle x is the number of copies of the original dna that we started our pcr reaction with okay so what is so the instrument that performs pcr is called as thermocycler okay thermocycler because it cycles the temperature okay so in the pcr what we do is all the components that are re required dna sample primer nucleotide tag polymerase mixed pcr buffer is all added together in the pcr tube okay in initially only and it is put in the slots okay and then in that control panel here we will set up the program like for how long we want this temperature the denaturation temperature what temperature and for how long okay like that a cycle will be set up and then the number of total cycles that we need that will be set up okay so thermocycler will keep on cycling between those set temperatures for that set number of time till that set number of cycle okay and the the enzymes that are present in the pcr tube they will do their function do you all get the idea do you all follow what happened what is happening in pcr so thereby at the end the selective segment that we wanted okay that will be amplified to million copies Okay, so all of you have seen the, um, uh, the, the the detective series, right, or the serials or the movies, right, where the forensic team will c come and take a small segment of blood or small drop of blood from the crime scene. Okay, so what they will do with it? So from that, they will isolate the DNA. Now, if the sample size is small, the DNA size obtained will also be very small. Okay, so the first thing that they will do is they will amplify the DNA. They will under they will they will uh, do PCR. Okay, so that they have enough sample. Okay, so that the different tests can be performed. Okay, so what are the critical criteria for success of PCR? First of all, the primer. It is very very important because primer will mark the area that we want to amplify okay second the temperatures okay because you see in the thermocycler everything is controlled by the temperature whether it will be the denaturation step or annealing step or extension step it is completely controlled by temperature okay so the temperature is the second criteria and next is the size of the dna fragment that is to be amplified so if we try to amplify a dna fragment which is too big then the amplification efficiency will be reduced Okay, so DNA length should not be more than 3 kb and ideally it should be less than 1 kb if we want to get up the best amplification. Now, how do we check? So once thermocycler, we have set it up, it has done. Okay, so it has stopped. Now we cannot see anything. Okay, maximum if you see, you can just see some turbidity in the solution, in the PCR solution. So how to check whether our segment that we wanted has been amplified or not. Okay, so one way of checking it is by electrophoresis. Okay, so suppose we have targeted to amplify a segment which is of 1 kb. Okay, so what we will do, we will run the sample and along with that, we will run the size marker. So this size marker will give us a DNA ladder, okay, where the DNA fragments, it will already be known to us that there will be different DNA fragments with different size. Okay, so in then what we will do, so in the PCR sample, if we are finding a band, a clear DNA band in the size that we expected, okay, so we expect, we were, uh, targeting to amplify a 1 kb sized fragment so if we see a band in the 1 kb region okay so then we can prove we can say that we have identified or we have the pcr has performed well okay now if the expected band is absent or along with that some additional bands are present or the dna sample is present like a smear okay 
that means something has gone wrong which means the primer or the the temperature was not proper because of that the ex, the amplification of the selective dna has not happened okay now so that was about pcr but yes i wanted to tell you about rt pcr i am very sure in this past 2 years all of you have heard about rt pcr yes or no anybody who has not heard about rt pcr everywhere we need rt pcr you are traveling rt pcr you are coming back to work you need rt pcr if you are going anywhere it, you you need rt pcr isn't it in this 2 years of pandemic is that not we have heard the most rt pcr Okay, so even the layman's have understood or they, they, they also know RT-PCR, even the people who are from a different background, isn't it? So what is this RT-PCR? So RT-PCR here, it's a type of PCR. There are different types of PCR as well. Okay, since we don't have enough time, so we are not going into that. Uh, by gel electrophoresis salonia, we will check whether the PCR has happened correctly or not. Okay. Right. So RT stands for reverse transcriptase. Okay. Now reverse transcriptase is the enzyme that is used for reverse transcriptase. Okay. Now this reverse transcriptase is the enzyme that converts mRNA into cDNA. Okay, so RT-PCR is the kind of PCR which we perform when the starting material is a RNA. Okay, so we are not starting with DNA here, we are starting with RNA. Okay, so if we are starting with mRNA here, so first step will be what? We will add a primer that will be complementary to the mRNA and we will add reverse transcriptase which will convert this mRNA into cDNA. Okay, now that cDNA, this single strand of cDNA will act as our sample. Okay, and on that, the second cDNA will be produced, that the second strand will be produced. Okay, so the first cycle of PCR will be used to make the two DNA strands, okay, a double stranded DNA molecule. After that, the PCR steps will be same. Okay, just here, one extra step will be included that is. First, we will convert the mRNA into cDNA by, by, the, by using reverse transcriptase. And then the first cycle of PCR will be used to convert that single-stranded cDNA into a double-stranded DNA molecule. Rest steps, same as PCR. Okay. Now, when we used RT-PCR for detection of COVID, okay. So, there, not only we used RT-PCR, we also combined it with another type of PCR called as real-time PCR. So, it is real-time RT-PCR that was used for detection of COVID-19 virus. Now, what is real-time PCR? See, in the, in, the, in the traditional PCR, what did we do? So, after PCR is done, we had to run the sample in the gel to get the idea whether the amplification has happened correctly or not. If it is real-time PCR, it gives us an idea during the process itself, at the time when the reaction is happening. Okay. Now, discussion of real-time PCR is again, um, the, it's, it's, it's a different process. Okay. So, we cannot go into the detail now. All right. But I will give you an idea that how this technique was used for detecting the uh, COVID-19 virus. Okay. Because like in this pandemic, you can very well expect question re somewhere related to this COVID-19 also. Okay. So here the technique allows scientists to see the result almost immediately while the process is still going. Whereas the conventional RT-PCR, okay, only uh, provides result at the end of the process. So for this, what do we do? First of all, we collect sample. Sample is collected from the parts of the body where the COVID-19 virus gathers. Okay, so that's why the nasal sample is usually taken. Okay, now when we took out the sample, then we extract the RNA from the sample. Now, when you extract the RNA from the sample, so that RNA will contain human RNA for sure, because you have taken it from a person. Plus, it will have the viral RNA, the COVID-19 RNA, if the person is infected. 
right now if we want to detect the virus then what primer shall we add shall we add a primer which is specific to the human rna or shall we add a primer which will be specific for the viral rna we have to detect the virus okay we want to detect whether the person is infected with the virus or not so the correlation is if a person is infected with the virus there will be viral rna present okay because the genetic material of covid-19 virus is rna yes anybody yes that's correct nishan so we have to add a primer which will be specific for the viral rna okay so first of all reverse transcription uh, reverse transcriptase will be there so which will convert the rna into cdna then primer specific to the target sections of the viral dna is added okay to amplify the viral dna now if viral dna is there if the person is affected then viral dna will be present sorry viral rna will be present and that can be detected so it has been converted into cdna and it can be detected by emission of signal by a reported probe okay a standard real time rt pcr sets up uh, set up usually through uh, 35 cycles okay now what is done here is in the real time how are we able to see with the help of the reporter probe so which will which will give a fluorescence okay so as the amplification continues the fluorescence will increase okay now usually what do we do we put a threshold value okay so this threshold value is there okay so if in this set number of cycles if this threshold value of fluorescence is not uh, uh, not uh, crossed that means the person is not infected with the virus and if this threshold value is crossed then the person is infected with the virus okay now with this test not only we can detect whether the person is infected or not we can also detect how how much is the severity okay so faster the critical value is crossed that means infection is more severe later the critical value is crossed that means the infection is milder all right so with this we come to the end and let's quickly solve some questions here so uh, we uh, do not have any previous year uh, cut um, pg entrance paper but we definitely have some cucet papers Right, so I have taken some questions related to this topics from CUCET paper. I hope all of you will be able to answer them. So first, the technique of for the amplification of DNA is called, we just discussed, it is PCR. Okay, yes, uh, Mohammed Kafi are asking that some virus variants were not detectable even by RT-PCR, okay. So if the RT-PCR is not able to detect the variant, that means the primers that we have used are not proper, okay. So we have to use a different primer that will be able to detect the virus, okay. But in case of COVID-19, what happened is this RT-PCR is considered as the gold standard test. Okay, that if there is an infection, it will force it will it, the least chance of giving a false negative uh, result here. Yes, next question: Which of the following enzyme is used to synthesize DNA from DNA from mRNA template? Vishal, mRNA to DNA. Who will create that reverse transcriptase, not tag polymerase? Western blotting is a technique for the detection of specific protein in the sample. Next, which of the following technique is useful to detect mRNA in a sample? So we are talking about detecting RNA. So what technique? Northern blotting. Next, in agarose gel electrophoresis, DNA sample migrates towards so DNA is negatively charged. It will migrate towards the positive electrode, right? So which one is the positive electrode? Anode. Protein purification in 
no uh, parveen uh, not cathode see cathode is positive when we are talking about the galvanizing cell okay but in electrophoretic cell it becomes the opposite okay anode is the positive uh, electrode in the electrophoretic cell okay in a galvanizing cell like a battery it is the opposite okay next uh, the protein purification in two dimensional gel electrophoresis okay so what is two dimensional gel electrophoresis so here what we do is we do not use sds okay so we do not give a equivalent negative charge to all the protein so first of all what we do first like we will let the gel uh, undergo electrophoresis like this okay and we will let the protein isolate on the basis of their charge okay so first we will separate the protein on the basis of their charge then we will rotate the gel by 90 degree okay and then we will let the separated proteins to again separate it, separate on the basis of their size okay we do not treat the protein with sds so in two dimensional gel electrophoresis how the protein separation happens it happens on the basis of molecular weight and charge both first will be charge next will be weight okay so weight and charge both next reverse transcriptase pcr what it uses okay so here you can see these are two very similar uh, options given rna as the template to form dna or mrna as a template to form cdna okay so now this one is more uh, correct right so the, in this kind of scenario we have to choose the more accurate option the most common type of gel which is used for the dna separation it is agarose gel electrophoresis thermosecuticus is a source of tac polymerase the, if the question comes where this tac polymerase is used it will be pcr Which of the following method used to synthesize desired DNA sequence in vitro? Okay. So what we can do by polymerase chain reaction. That is PCR. Next first step of PCR is the first step of PCR will be denaturation. All right. So with this, we come to the end. So as uh, Dr. APJ Abdul Kalam has said that dreams is not what you see in sleep it is the thing which doesn't let you sleep so i hope all of your dreams to get in admission in a good central university comes true by the hard work that you put in this couple of months before the exam okay and yes biotechnica is always there with you to help you achieve your dream before leaving, one more time, you can up, you can download our Biotechnica app, which is available in the Google Play and the Apple App Store. And you can also um, join our Biotechnica Telegram group. Thank you, everybody, for joining. Please fill up the form. Please fill up the feedback form. Your feedback is definitely a great value to all us. And... Uh, See, uh, I hope all of you like the session. We uh, will be coming with all the sessions every Monday, Wednesday and Friday. See you at that time where we will discuss the other topics from the, uh, the, the CUET uh, PG syllabus. Thank you, everyone. Thank you for staying back. Bye. Good night.